Hey, welcome back to Heartbeats. I'm Gavin Eckhart. I hope you enjoy. My preference for what mm. I do at the moment is definitely studio mixing. Uh, mm. I like the sort of uh, pace of it and I like the controlled environment where you can keep going back to things and revisiting them and really honing each element until it's perfected or close enough to it. Um, theatre has its own challenges. Uh, I wouldn't say that the acoustics of the theatres are the most challenging aspects of them, although I have had so to mix in, built I have had to mix in a couple of substandard theatres or maybe environments, for example the Cape Town City Hall, doing a theatre production in the Cape Town City Hall was quite challenging because it's not necessarily designed for that. Um, I thought the sound was fairly good. Yeah. Anyway, we did refuse the hour at Cape Town City Hall and uh, the acoustics there were quite challenging. Uh, but the show is very acoustic, so it's more like a neo-chamber opera, as Adam mm. Howard calls it. And yeah. essentially you're just amplifying certain elements of the acoustic performance and enhancing them. So it's actually very quite a pleasure to, to, to get involved in something that's nuanced and subtle like that. Mm. In Berlin, at the Festspielhaus, I must just mention, they have the most incredible acoustics. It literally felt like I was mixing in a studio what? in the theatre. Yeah. Uh, That's precision, my God. Yeah, no, they're they're really good. I mean, they just put in a new DMB array, and uh, of course, with the theatre as well, you get to spec your gear. So you can choose whatever desk you want. You can choose whatever mics you want. Oh, you can nice. basically ask for whatever you want, and it'll arrive. Um, and having worked also, uh, another theatre that comes to mind is the Onassis Centre in Athens and they're it's a, probably about two or three years old when we worked there, it's probably about five or six years old now, but um, the mix point is literally in the about tenth row back in the middle of all the people, so awesome. you've got the best seats in the house. Wow, <laughs> you know, it's cool, you know, uh, others in the little dark <laughs> yeah, yeah, little glass panels, no, no, none of that. Um, and some of the other theatres we've worked in, they've been some of the most incredible theatres in the world. You know, um, Salle Richelieu in Paris mm. and uh, Avignon, uh, Palais de Pape right next door. There's the, the, the theatre, the main opera theatre there. The Theatre Argentina in Rome, which is also one of the oldest opera theatres in the world. Oh my god, I'd love to see those places. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you kind of can't complain. You no, know? I mean, you can't, it's not like you're sitting in some university struggling you you see you know you're working in really the primo primo theaters in the world and yeah. occasionally there's some challenges especially if it's within a festival context often the staff are overworked and there's not enough of them you know the technical support staff so those are really the the big challenges i think it's about the people more than the the venues and the, and the, and the gear. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Okay, so now to go to the completely <laughs> different. Okay. How did you get the name for Sophia Studios? My studio used to be in Sophia Town. Oh really? And I thought, hey, that sounds good. Soul Fire. I have had a friend who used to throw the Soul Fire parties in Sophia Town. Oh cool. What has now become the Freedom Station, um, more or less. And so I said, hey, Soul Fire, he's like, Soul Fire Session, I'm like, Soul Fire Studios, why not? Yeah, yeah. And now it's because it's hot. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> what advice would you give uh, to people who wanted to set up their own studios? Like, what are the, like, five things that are, like, musts before you even begin to think about it? Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, God, there's so much! <laughs> no, it's like so nothing, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, setting up your own sound studio is a very ill-advised idea for anyone. Uh, essentially, studios are black holes of money. Really? Um, it doesn't matter what you buy, there'll always be something better. Yeah, you're right. Technology keeps on advancing. Yeah, well, it's not only technology, but it's also, you know, the you buy all this new stuff and then you realize the old stuff's way better. Oh, no. <laughs> that's freaking annoying! Yeah, I know. And it just costs a lot to maintain. It's like then you start getting into like a vintage car situation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give me back the old yeah, days. It's a Come beautiful on. 
full car, but you just need to reupholster all the seats mm. and rebore the engine. And, and there's no one that just repair. There's no yeah, warranty on exactly, that stuff. Exactly, exactly. So. so now you've just got to 3D print the <laughs> <laughs> you know engine flange. <laughs> Oh my Why god! Why did I do this? I, I have one mic that literally took me 10 years to repair properly. Crap. Just because, uh, you know, money and time and effort and all of that sort of thing. And the cable, <laughs> just the cable was 150 euros. What? Yeah, I mean, like. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah, you know, so I mean, essentially, what do you, five <sighs> things you need to start a studio patience, <laughs> money. <laughs> Space, <laughs> time, and inspiration, uh, dedication. I can, I can you can keep more, going. There's a couple more Asians, but uh, <laughs> you know, there's quite a lot of Asian when it comes to. <laughs> You've worked in studio and on tour with various artists. Okay, I'm gonna name drop now. Right, oh, like. cool! I like it. <laughs> Like Fresh Your Ground, Malaika, Nati, Three Pretty Moon, Saki, alright. But do you have a preference with the kinds of artists that you enjoy working with? Professional ones. Professional? <laughs> <laughs> Genre, style? Um, look, music's a beautiful thing because it has so many aspects and facets and yeah interesting places. Uh, I still meet people in the music industry doing things in areas of the music industry that I didn't know existed. Hmm, I didn't yeah. know you could be a successful R&B producer with songa lyrics or whatever. You know yeah, what I mean? There's know. so many little Meshets. micro industries, so to speak, you know, with the dance music, Afrikaans music, Indian classical music, traditional African music, African pop music, yeah. Pan-African pop music. <laughs> yeah, there's so many <laughs> different know, subgenres. Like, Every culture has their own small little pocket of, of musical intrigue. Mm. And, and for me, finding all of those interesting little spaces uh, within the music industry and within uh, uh, musical performance realms is really what drives me. Certainly touring at the moment, I really enjoy touring with Freshly Ground. They're mm. a super bunch of people. The music's great. It's feel good. It's got high energy, yeah. uh, and that's wonderful. There's a few jazz ensembles that I'm also working with uh, in various capacities, recording and mixing live. And that for me is also quite um, special because it's really doing less to achieve more. Mm -hmm. You know, getting the right mics in the right place before it all kicks off, and then enjoying the show. Nice. You know, which yeah. is great. <laughs> okay, so you're also a score engineer for various films, okay? Which I believe, and I've heard from some other people, that requires quite a bit of patience, okay? So what has been one of the most challenging experiences you've had doing that? I would say there's quite a few challenges to being a score engineer. Um, the first is the deadline. So, ironically, you don't need a lot of patience. You need a lot of speed. <laughs> you need oh, to be very fast. <laughs> the last two, <laughs> yeah. the two of the films I've mixed this year. I don't know if they were the last two, but at some point this year I've mixed two films, and both of them were done in less than forty-eight hours. What? Literally, just turn that around. Just how long were the films? Each of films ninety minutes. Like, like total. Oh yeah, my yeah, yeah. god! Look, one of them was only ten odd cues, and okay. most of those cues composed of a gate squeaking. Oh, right. Okay, so not... Yeah, it was a very musical gate. <laughs> <laughs> very musical not gates. artists. Um, so not, with, well, yeah. the thing is, again, it becomes an up-mix situation because um, a lot of the time, mixing a film score is actually more about file management than it is about listening. <laughs> uh, for example, if you've got 40 minutes of music in a film, um, you'll probably only spend 10% to 20% of your time actually listening to mm. and mixing physically, deciding, sculpting the sound, changing your reverbs, blah, blah, blah. Most of the time you're rooting, you're putting groups, you're putting buses, you're putting folders, you're putting outputs, you mm. panning in the, in the thing, you're changing a stereo reverb for a surround reverb and then you're manipulating that to make it sound like it it's was a stereo yeah. reverb. Oh. Etc. Etc. Then you're doing all your file management. You're doing all your stems exporting, because every delivery has six stems, 
and each stem has six channels. <laughs> so if you had six mono files, you now have oh. 36 mono files. Oh my God. So you're literally up mixing. Yeah. That's what we call it, you know. So it's, so it's really just being pernickety and making sure that all your technical ducks are in a row. Jeez. More than it is about what it sounds like. Wow. In a weird way. Because also you challenge to know what it's going to sound like because you're given this one track of dialogue and effects. Yeah. And when it gets mixed, suddenly that dialogue and effects is in six channels or mm. 40 channels if you're in Atmos. And now you've got to also consider that when you're pre-mixing the music because there's going to be some guy writing the music as well mm -hmm. so you've got to sort of preempt all of these things which which can be quite tedious and you've got to do it quickly yeah well yeah, yeah. this year 2017 i've got some interesting projects on the go um involved with philip doing a women's museum the women's museum in pretoria oh wow we're doing all the soundscapes and musical sort of backdrops and things like that so that's going to be very incredibly challenging uh we've got sort of up to eight channels of audio in some of the installations wow. and pre-mixing it considering that it's going to be flying from the ceilings and yeah. all the sort of things <laughs> is quite a challenge um so you have to sort of really be on top of all of that stuff uh, i've got some interesting installations with uh, mikhail sabotsky at the Goodman Gallery. Mm. Uh, I've got some nice workshops with William Kentridge coming up hey, yeah. uh, for his Wojciech opera, which is his new opera. And a uh, few albums on the go. Uh, I just finished mixing some songs for Nancy G. Uh, yeah. Tandy and Thule's single has just been released. Uh, we've got another interesting artist from zimbabwe netsai uh she's gonna be releasing an album soon i'm busy mixing that uh, i've got a couple of other sort of productions it just sounds things. like a, you know those lists <laughs> that you roll they just keep <laughs> yeah. well, it's kind of like that the longer i think about it the more there is um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, I just did a really cool track with uh, uh, Motlatsi uh, from Isidingo uh, and Bricks. He's performing on there. That's going to be dope. So a bit of production work as well. Uh, I enjoy that. What characteristics do you value in yourself that you believe have helped you along your path? The tenacity mm. of my mind, the honesty of my heart and the passion of my soul. Oh, that's awesome. My message to all you Heartbeats fans is dream your life and live your dreams. That's a wrap. Thanks Gavin for your time. I wish you and Soulfire Studios absolute best in the future. Thank you for watching. Rooms out there. Hello. Uh, share your stories about uh, whether you're setting up a studio or you're going on adventures or any of that kind of stuff and have a great day. Like, subscribe, comment and I'll check you next time with another heartbeat story.